Hey guys, we are back updating the power rankings for the Amazing Race 36 following episode 8. And this was a very bizarre episode with a very unusual ending, but we'll get to that soon enough. But there are six teams to talk about, and that's wasting more time. Let's go right into the video. So starting off at number six, we have the boots from this week. And here we have Angie and Danny, who end up going out in a very unusual way here where they actually got out to a pretty good start where they were second place at the beginning of the leg. And we saw them doing pretty well on those initial tasks, even being second place up to the marker at Rihanna's house. But then everything went downhill after they took a wrong turn, causing them to get separated from their camera crew. And this basically forced them to stop as per the rules and wait for their team to catch up. And by the time that they got there, they were still second to last. They weren't even in last place. But obviously they did fall behind on that final detour and they are eventually eliminated despite a close finish as well where we saw Ron Letitia getting their car stuck in the mud on the way to the pit stop. So it was a pretty interesting finish for a lot of it and obviously you can say that they got screwed over here by the fact that they basically had to stop for production reasons. But still, it is technically part of the rules nonetheless that you have to be with your camera crew at all times. But still, it's still a very bizarre way to see this team going out, considering how well they seem to be doing over the last couple of legs, and even considering how well they were doing in the beginning of this leg. So obviously, it's a pretty strange way for them to go out, but they are now out of the race to, to where they're here at number six. And with that, there are five teams left in a race to talk about, and as usual, of a ranking them based on how lucky they are to win the race based on their edit and current race position. But at number five, the team that I believe is the least lucky to win from this point on is still Yvonne and Melissa. And it's not as if they've been getting bad content. They actually got some decent content here talking about how they've been wanting to live together, but one that's been wanting to take it slow. And I would say they do okay across this leg where they came in in second to last. They did get up to second place by the start of the detour, only for them to fall behind to fourth place by the end of it. So again, they're not doing that bad, but even that they themselves admit that they've been middle of the pack for a lot of it, but now it's been getting harder and harder to keep up, which makes me think that they're probably not going to pull it out by the end of it. Then also, I feel like the other teens are more well-defined characters on the show. That kind of leaves them behind at number five. Now, moving on to number four, and this team came pretty close to getting eliminated here, but we do have Rod and Letitia. Now, Rod and Letitia do obviously end up finishing second to last, and they almost kind of blow it despite them like coming into the detour in fourth place, where obviously Angie and Danny, they were able to kind of catch up to them. You also have them getting their car stuck in the mud on the way to the pit stop. So for all we know, they could have been eliminated from this leg here. Now, even before that, they were middle of the pack earlier on. And while they were slow on the roadblock, they were still fourth place coming to the detour, only for them to fall behind two seconds to last. And obviously there's been this interesting dynamic of Letitia learning to be more competitive while Rod's been learning to lay back a bit more. So again, that's at least something. I feel like the other teams that we talked about are a bit more developed on the show and a bit more consistent, which is why they're here at number four. Now moving on to number three, and this is a team that got very confusing content in this episode, but we do have Amber and Vinny. Now, this episode did kind of showcase them fighting a bit more, which has been a bit of a theme during the season. They even say in this episode that one of their struggles has been working together, that they've been doing well individually, but as a team, they've been kind of struggling. And obviously, this was kind of an up and down leg for them, where even though they started off in fourth place, they were the last to the roadblock, and they were last coming out of the roadblock. Now, yes, they do recover a bit by the time of the detour to where they eventually get into third place. But obviously, there was still plenty of fighting along the way. But at the same time, we also got some weird personal content from Vinny, where he got to talk about being from the Philippines during the detour, how he knows a thing or two about being a fisherman, which made me think he was going to just jump out to first place, not too dissimilar from the leg that they won back in episode two. But no, they still managed to maintain their placement from this portion of the leg, and they do get third place there. Again, I just find them to be a pretty hard team to assess, but I feel like with another team getting more positive content compared to them, I do have them here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and this team had a very interesting leg here, and that is Juan and Shane. And obviously they were back in the pack for most of it, where they were last place coming into it. They were second to last during the roadblock, fall back down to last place by the time of the detour. And they were actually the only team to choose the seaweed detour, which is actually pretty funny considering we saw both Ricky and Cesar and Yvonne and Melissa initially choose to go with the seaweed detour. But then upon seeing it and seeing how far apart the stations are, they decided to switch detours right then and there, which I did find pretty funny, but they're just really able to blow through this going from last place to second place. And they're able to get a second place finish by the end of it, seemingly out of nowhere. 
And I did find that pretty interesting. And I feel like they got pretty decent content here where they talk about how they didn't leave their families to come up with nothing and that they're pretty much major characters on the season. So again, I feel like this was pretty good content from here for them in this episode. And I feel like it kind of shot them back up into contention. But I still feel like there's a pretty blatant number one team, which is why they're here at number two. And now at number one, the team that I believe is the most likely to win the Amazing Race 36 right now is still Ricky and Cesar. And they may end up being the most dominant team in the Amazing Race history, where they are now at five wins, three second place finishes, and one of the best average placements in all of the Amazing Race. Obviously, there's a lot of comparisons here to Justin and Diana. And granted, while they ended up coming up short by the end of it, which is still a concern for them, I still feel like I can't ignore just how dominant they've been over the course of the race. Where at this point, they had the same number of wins as Kim and Penn, despite there still being three legs left. And I consider Kim and Penn to be a pretty dominant team in the show's history. So for Rick and Cesar to match that with still room to improve, I still find that really impressive from a race standpoint. And again, they've been getting pretty positive content as well. They've talked about like being like these big characters. They seem to be pretty rootable people on the show. Now, yes, there's still a chance that they could come up short by the end of it. They could choke in the final leg. But I feel like with their consistent track record throughout the race, I can't really ignore that, which is why they're here number one. And there we go. That'll do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Really helps with the channel. And I'll be back again next week to update the Power Rankings again, so you can look forward to that. I'm covering other shows, including Survivor 46, Big Brother Canada 12, and The Circle Season 6, so you can expect weekly Power Rankings of those shows. I'm on Patreon, so if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that is the video. See ya.